There are tablets that you can get in US markets and around the world that are actually below $100 but uh, they're nowhere close to the performance that you'd expect. They're the type of things that you'd maybe buy and throw away in 15 or 20 days. This retail unsubsidized in-store is $99. It is not $99 with some subscription. It's, it's $99 straight. It's a capacitive multi-touch screen. Um, it supports a 1080p video decoder with HDMI out. I can plug it into the TV, watch movies. Uh, battery life on this thing with uh, uh, movie playback was about eight hours. Um, also has a front and back camera. HDMI slot, uh, SD card slot, uh, it's running uh, at one gigahertz. It has four gigabytes, uh, four gigabytes and eight gigabyte option for flash, 512 megs of RAM, um, and you know, fits in your pocket. This one that eliminates the cameras and the HDMI is $79. Exactly the same performance device, but 79. This one, which hasn't hit the market yet, looks very similar to this one with the two cameras, but While this one is a slightly lower resolution screen, which typically works very well in Asia, um, uh, this is a wide VGA screen, 800 by 480. This is a slightly higher density, 1024 by 600, and a very beautiful screen. This one, probably another 10 or $15 more, so somewhere around the $115 price point. Um, so one thing we're doing differently from ARM is we work very closely with our downstream partners, licensees, OEMs, et cetera, and try to understand exactly what their market requirements are. For example, um, uh, on the Ingenic tablets that were released, we partnered very closely with Gameloft upstream ahead of time to understand that uh, gaming is one big area for tablets, especially at this price point where content means a lot more than just a tablet that can browse the web or check email, things like that. And uh, when our downstream partners understand the value of that, then they work with Gameloft. And so Gameloft content like Spider-Man HD, for example, is available on the tablet. Since we have a dominance in the set-top box and DTV market, um, which is also something different from where ARM is today, um, uh, we've gained quite a bit of Android level expertise. So we go through the extent of not only porting Android, but we optimize Android for our downstream partners to really shrink their time to market. Because uh, our customers are based in China and they also work towards stronger integration of other pieces of IP, whether it's, for example, these tablets have built-in HDMI, uh, which is a part of his SOC, um, it delivers uh, lower bomb costs as well. So, and this is the other reason why we're able to really bring down the prices of these uh, specific devices. Everybody in this entire chain from um, us as the IP provider, our silicon guys, Ingenic, or Action Semiconductor, and I'll show you some of their devices later, to the industrial design houses, to the ODMs, to the OEMs, to the branding and the carrier, all are making money throughout this whole chain. It's actually a very good business because, um, like you said, margins are shrinking in the hardware business, but the volumes are also increasing once the price hits this level. What we announced this morning uh, was another OEM from Indonesia, SpeedUp. Uh, or MLW Telecom. They're the second largest CPE provider in Indonesia. They launched uh, basically the same tablet branded to their own with Indonesian content with prepaid uh, six months of uh, Wi-Fi, roaming Wi-Fi service throughout Indonesia for $33. You just have to sign a contract for a year. But it is reality. It is not, it is not uh, something that uh, we're talking about that uh, demonstrates a tablet that isn't really useful for the masses. I mean, this is something that you can use to browse the web. In fact, I keep one in my pocket because it's my primary email device now, too.